Hey, welcome to the Word of the Week. We're here to take you on a journey to explore some of the great Hebrew and Greek words that are so deeply connected to our Christian faith. Every week, we'll grab a new word, unpack it, and give you some quick tidbits to learn a little bit more about that word, how it might apply in your life, or how you might uh, dig into it a little bit more in your own personal study. So, let's dive in to the word this week. So, the word this week is Shema, and when you read the word and see it spelled out, it's kind of a funny way to pronounce it, but that's the, that's the way it sounds, Shema. It's a really important Hebrew word that Jesus probably would have spoken several times a day throughout his entire life. And before we dig into the word itself, I want to share a really cool story with you that actually really highlights the power of this word. So in order to uh, frame you up for the story, we got to roll back the clock to 1945. Well, it was just after World War II had ended and there was a, a rabbi that headed up the search for thousands of children, little Jewish children, who had been displaced uh, and ended up all over Europe. These Jewish kids had been hidden from the clutches of the Nazis uh, all over the place on farms and convents and monasteries. And now this rabbi was on the hunt to try and find all these hidden kids so that he could help reunite them with their families. So at one point, the rabbi got a great tip that there was a monastery in southern France that had taken in a number of these Jewish children. So the rabbi, he travels there and he meets with the priest Unfortunately, the priest wasn't much help. He told the rabbi that as far as he knew, all of the kids were Christian, uh, not Jewish. He didn't really even know if they had any Jewish kids that had uh, ended up in this uh, monastery. So he didn't really have any records or pictures. Uh, and so the rabbi scans the room and looks at their little faces. Many of them had been there since they were toddlers. How in the world was he ever going to know if any of those little kids were actually from Jewish families? So the rabbi, he asked the priest if he could go visit each of the wards. And he went in, and then in front of the children, he began to sing a, a Hebrew song. Shema Israel, Adonai Elohinu, Adonai Ihad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then he looked around the room at a handful of those little faces. They lit up and their little voices started to join in from around the room because they recognized those words from their bedtime prayers, from the earliest memories of their moms and dads reciting them each morning uh, during their evening and morning prayers. So those important words were connected to a really important practice. Let me help you understand. Do you ever personally just wake up in a fog of stress or anxiety? You're just unable to focus uh, because the minute you woke up, you feel like you're just being pulled in multiple directions, right? The stress of work, unresolved issues with your family, unanswered emails, sickness, tiredness, financial pressure. Like there's so many things in our lives that can really just leave us feeling flat and unable to focus in the morning. So stress like that may feel like a, a modern world issue, but I assure you there is an ancient solution. For thousands of years, Jewish believers have spoken a prayer the very moment they wake up that help focus their attention on God rather than on the things of this world. And that prayer is called the Shema. It's a, a Hebrew word that means hear and obey. So the Shema prayer comes right out of the scriptures from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Let's take a look at it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you lock, walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hand and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So the word Shema implies action. 
It's the, a word that Jesus used when he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear, which was his way of telling his followers to uh, hear his words and obey. I heard a rabbi say uh, something like this. When God says Shema, it's an invitation for us to listen, to respond, to appreciate, to understand, and to act. It's a pretty loaded word. So as a Jew, Jesus would have prayed the Shema prayer every morning. Uh, it's a way of committing himself to loving God and obeying his word that day. And I wonder how your attitude would change if the first thing you did every morning with your very first breath was to wake up and commit yourself to loving God and obeying his word through this very prayer. So my wife Kayla and I have practiced this Shema prayer in the mornings on and off for the past couple of years. And I can definitely attest to the fact that when I do it, my days are better, my heart's in a better spot, my attitude's better. I feel closer to God uh, when we're actually doing this. I know she would say the same. So you can find the words to the Shema prayer in the description below. You can also find some links to sign up for things like our weekly guide service. Just a great weekly email newsletter that comes out on the weekends so that we can help come alongside you, help you grow in your faith as a follower of Jesus. Be sure you hit subscribe, like this video, and then go check out some of the other great teachings that we have like this one, uh, where we hike 10 miles in the snow to find out what a hundred year old abandoned dam could teach you about Jesus. Uh, or another cool one that you might like is a great mini series that we filmed up in Banff National Park where we explored this idea of what you're saved for. So see you next week for another great word of the week. Have a good one.